Hello and welcome to today's video where in today's video I'm going to be reviewing the Sony a7C2 which is my very first camera and this video is going to be coming from a perspective of a guy who's never really wanted a camera until trying out this one. Just before we start I am recording this video on the Sony Alpha 7 IV which I have borrowed from my brother. I have used the iPhone 14 Pro Max to record everything previously pretty much but honestly I couldn't stand using an iPhone anymore after seeing what a camera is capable of. What really made me look for a camera to buy was mainly to film the short content which are Instagram Reels, specifically cars, because I've noticed how much of a quality difference there is between the iPhone and a camera after my brother showing me his footage that he got with the Sony a7 IV and I just thought that it'd be really fun to explore something new and to kind of break the barrier of me not wanting a camera just because I was afraid of one. So many buttons, options and I was completely lost whenever looking at his camera. But at the end of the day I just enjoyed the output so much that I have just considered picking up one myself and trying it out. So with that in mind I am going to be talking about a lot of cool features which I really like about the Sony a7 C2. Now they may be present in other cameras but for me they're new and I will be doing a lot of comparison to as I said the Sony a7 IV as well as iPhone 14 Pro Max. So if you're considering buying a camera whether it's Sony a7 C2 or any other camera this video is still very beneficial to watch because after getting the camera I was very surprised about many things which I didn't really even think about. So I've got my notes here I have a lot of points to cover I have tried to lay them out in a very specific order just so all the information flows well but first off, the footage that you get with the camera versus the iPhone practically doesn't require color grading. So what do I mean by that? So whenever I have recorded a footage on an iPhone, I always had to go and tweak some colors. Usually it was to make blacks blacker, whites whiter, or even to increase that richness in color. My second point, which is to be honest very obvious, is that the camera does have a larger sensor compared to the iPhone, so more light can get in better recording during night, better photos during night, as well as the photos and the videos that you get during the day is just so much better to edit, which nicely glides over to my third point. So even though I was recording my footage on an iPhone in 4K and then I was showing it into like Premiere Pro in order to crop certain parts, I've noticed that the video has lost its sharpness, even though I haven't zoomed in too much, which compared to the Sony a7 C2, I can crop in a lot and the video looks extremely sharp compared to the iPhone footage. So the videos are so much easier and so much more pleasant to edit. So my next point, pretty obvious, something I knew, and um, the camera has a smaller screen compared to an iPhone. So I knew that this was going to be slight of a challenge to get used to. I just didn't know that it's going to be this much of a challenge. So first off, whenever I was taking photos, I have noticed that a lot of my photos were out of focus, despite seeing or thinking that they were in focus. Everything looked fine on the screen, but since the screen is so small, it's really hard to tell if it is really in focus. I am aware of that you can use focus maps, you can use stuff like zebra lines to make sure that your colors and shadows and all that is fine. It's just that at the start, there was a very high learning curve compared to this. And even to this day, I end up taking more footage of whatever I'm shooting just to make sure that I do have the correct footage. Staying on the topic of the external screen is that you can actually flip the screen, turn it around and you can actually record yourself and see what you're recording, which is how I'm recording this video. I've got the camera pointed at me, the screen is flipped and I have my focus map on to see that whatever I'm pointing or bring it up close is in fact in focus and I can see that I am in focus which is what I want. And one more point about the external screen is that whenever I was recording my very first video, which was the gimbal video, I had to actually re-record this, I've noticed that I've spent most of the time looking at the screen versus the actual lens, which made the video look really weird despite being so close to the lens. So first time getting the camera and trying to record, it's very hard to not look at the screen. Once you actually get comfortable that whatever you are recording is in focus, like you do trust the camera that it records properly, it's very easy to convert. But at the start, again, doing my first video, I had to re-record this because it looked just very awkward. My next point is the autofocus, so I will make sure to hit on the Sony a7 IV as well as the iPhone 14 Pro Max. But the first time I was recording video with this camera, it was really awkward because there are a few things which you need to learn before recording the video. So there is a thing called the focus area and you have to choose the appropriate focus area. You may think to yourself, I am recording myself, I want the focus area to be in the middle. Well, it's not always the case. So this video I am recording in wide focus, I think it's called. I think in the Sony a7 IV there is the eye tracking thing. Um, on the iPhone 14 Pro Max or any other phone, it's pretty much very easy. You can just point the camera at whatever 
camera and the autofocus well just itself it's pretty good in this but in the sony a7 IV you do have the focus modes uh, like on the sony a7 IV but one thing that tripped me out big time and in fact this is the actual reason why i had to re-record the video not the external monitor well keep in mind it was looking a bit awkward but there is this thing which allows you to track certain things such as cars, trains, people, uh, so you can choose what you want to track. So I thought to myself that if I'm going to set the tracking point to be a person and then set it to the center, it is just going to track me. But as soon, despite tracking me, a person, I've placed two gimbals on each side. It just kept track of the two gimbals and not of me, which made the entire footage of me just pure blurry and it looked like crap. So the next point, very subjective, but whenever you have a camera in your hand and you're going out with your camera to either shoot photos or videos, it gets you more creative, it gets you thinking compared to like whipping out a phone in two seconds and being ready to record. It just makes you kind of set your mindset to, I am going to take some videos, I'm going to take some photos, I'm thinking about certain things which I can do in order to make the footage better, how I can get creative. So the very last point of the generic list before we will get to talking about the camera and its really neat features is the expandability and to be specific the lenses. Once you understand the parameters of the lenses such as the f-stop it is going to open up a whole new world for you in terms of creativity for video and photos. So now let's talk about the camera whether it's the cool features or things you should do as a first timer. So first off just to get it off the list whenever you get the camera power it on go through all the settings research things that you are unaware of and it's going to help you out and save you a lot of time because it will allow you to understand what the camera is capable of next up i remember when i was doing the unboxing i have looked at the lanyard and i kind of threw it into the box saying that i will never use it i was really wrong because whenever you're walking around the place with the camera not having a strap whether it's a wrist strap a neck strap or whatever other strap you are going to be so paranoid walking around freehand like so. It is such a scary and weird feeling that again, like I highly 100% recommend you have some sort of wrist strap. Next up, a very important tip, especially if you're using the camera in manual mode, is that you should have a list for videos. You could have one for photos, but it's definitely not as important as for videos. So whenever you're recording a video, you may kind of record whatever you want to record, you go back home and then you're very terribly surprised that the footage looks like garbage. And it's most likely because you haven't adjusted the camera properly to whatever you were shooting, such as ISO, the f-stop, and autofocus, autofocus area, whatever. So having a list in order to kind of go through each and every single thing that you need to adjust is very important at the start. Once you do it a few times, you're gonna get a hang of things and you won't need the list, but this will save you a lot of time. To transition nicely into the current point, you can see that there are a lot of things which you can change based on the situation that you're shooting. For example, for your reels, you may wanna have your focus area set to center, you may wanna have your focus uh, tracking set to car, and for your YouTube video, you might wanna have your focus area set to wide and your focus uh, tracking set to a person. So here are the modes. You can hopefully see the numbers one to three, and that's where you can basically set certain settings. So for example, let's say that I wanna record some reels and I wanna get some rollers. So under my first profile, I could have my frame rate set to 25, I could have my focus area set to center, and then I could have my focus uh, tracking set to car. So instead of every time going through all those settings, I could have everything set pretty much here, which is so much more convenient having to switch the dial versus having to change like seven settings in order to get going. Next point, very important, very, very, very important, is the auto stabilization. So if you're recording the video freehand, feel free to have the auto stabilization on. I think there are three modes. You can have it off, you can have it normal, and you can have it super or whatever. And super is in fact really recommended when recording videos freehand. It does make your video look very smooth. Now, if you are recording on a gimbal, please, for the love of God, turn it off because it is going to make your first footage very unusable because your gimbal already stabilizes and compensates. But if you have your stabilization on, it is going to make your footage kind of stutter in certain places and it is not going to be smooth. It is going to look like crap. It is not going to be very usable. So let's say I'm taking an image of a car and I notice that the image is very dark. So I could obviously go into settings, change the ISO in order to make the image brighter, 
but what you can do is you can assign the ISO to one of the dials. I think I have it right here under the little spinny thing. So I can point at whatever I'm shooting and I can spin the dial to see right away what the image looks like versus having to go into settings. So quick tip within a tip that I end up using a lot, especially for shooting YouTube videos, is that even when you're shooting in manual mode, which is what I'm doing, I have my ISO set to automatic, especially in an area where light changes frequently. I want my footage to look the best. So in order to change that to automatic, all you have to do is just go to your iOS setting or ISO setting and then just spin the dial to the lowest ISO and then it's gonna go finally into automatic once you go below that very lowest level. Next up, and again, as I said, the camera has a lot of features, especially in software. There are pages upon pages and settings that you can change. And sometimes remembering where everything is and having to go through everything in order to find what you're looking for can be very frustrating. So there's this thing called the favorites menu screen or whatever you call it. And basically it allows you to get the settings that you want into one screen and make you or allow you to change those very conveniently on one page versus having to go through all of the menus. Since we are here, it's not really just this camera. I think that it's cameras in general, but since it's a first camera type of situation, point of view that I'm trying to give you, so really kind of awkward. Um, whenever I am getting my images with an iPhone, it's usually a .tif, I believe. So I can throw those into my Lightroom, I can edit the photos and then I can put them to Premiere Pro and the photos do look the same as in Lightroom. But a few days ago I was shooting images and editing it in Lightroom and wanted to add them into uh, Premiere Pro. And once I have added the images edited in Lightroom, which were exported into JPEG, which was the same as for my iPhone images, the video, sorry, the images, they just became so bright and it looked very washed out, which was very extremely annoying. So I might as well mention it here. So the tip that can hopefully not get you frustrated. So I want to give you my workaround to this issue. I'm not sure if it's the official one, but it's something I've discovered, I think two days ago when I was like really frustrating and trying to get the images to look the same as in Lightroom in my Premiere Pro. So. First off, what you want to do is you want to export your images into .tif versus JPEG if you're planning to use it in your Premiere Pro. And the next thing that you want to do is your color space, change it to sRGB. And I found that if you export your photos into the .tif and sRGB and drag them into your Premiere Pro, your photos will look practically the same as they do in your Lightroom. One more thing which I also changed is that I changed the color bit from 8-bit to 16-bit within the export settings of Lightroom. So one last point before we get to the conclusion. I'd like to say that I'm very familiar with this camera. I feel very comfortable using it at this point. There are some hiccups here and there, but overall I feel very comfortable using this camera. So this video I was setting up the Sony a 7 IV, which technically this camera derives from. It just has more kind of features but what I found is that the Sony a7 IV has more settings that you can change internally. You obviously have more buttons and dials, which can be somewhat helpful for other people, but I found setting up this camera for this video very intimidating. So now over to conclusion. Like genuinely, I am super extremely happy with this camera and I'm very happy with myself that I decided to kind of go and buy a camera versus just being intimidated like I was for a very, very, very long time. And if you're one of those people and you aren't really fully committed, you're just thinking about a camera, I'd recommend getting probably a used one, a camera that has already depreciated, something that you can buy and probably sell for the same price. So that will allow you to either see if you do like a camera, and if you do, then you can easily sell it and buy a better camera, the one that you really wanted. Or if you aren't a fan of cameras, you can probably sell it and forget about it. But honestly, I think that it's something really worth giving a try. Every time I pick up this camera, Genuinely, I'm very excited whether it's videos, whether it's images. Recently, I went to take some photos at BMW. I've probably inserted some photos in the video, but asking if I can take some photos and being able to like take out like a professional camera, it just made me feel so much more comfortable walking around and taking photos, even when recording YouTube videos. Like I have my phone here, just pretend that this is the camera recording. I have my phone here. I can have all the information that I want on my phone to make sure that I mention everything. I can do research on the spot as I'm sitting down. I don't have to get up and change them as I'm recording with my phone. Like 
I am just super genuinely happy with this camera and I'm really really glad as I've said that I have gotten this camera. So this has been the video. I do really appreciate everyone watching, liking, subscribing and I will hopefully see my next video. Take care man, to the next one.